This demo will show you how to schedule an SSRS report using a data-driven schedule. The report will run every week on a Monday at 8 a.m. and will be sent to a folder location and an email. To begin, I'm going to select data-driven for SSRS. The first thing I need to do is connect to the DSN which is linked to my database which has all the required information. If you don't already have a user ID and password then enter it here. I'm going to connect. I now need to select the table that holds my required data and for me it's suppliers. And I'm going to return records where the supplier ID is equal to number one or the supplier ID contains the number 2. And I will just pass those results and view them. And these are the results that it brings back. And OK to save that information. The next thing I need to do is give it a key column and in my case it's going to be supplier ID. This checkbox here will allow me to group reports together by email address for the email destination. So if a recipient of the reports is due to get five reports instead of getting five separate emails they would get one email with five attachments. And next this is where I select the SSRS account that I wish to use for running my reports. And then I select my report location. And I'm going to be running the supplier information report. And next. This report is going to run weekly every Monday at 8 a.m. So I can leave every one week as the default, uncheck the other days of the week, and overtype the time here to say 8 a.m. And next to save it. This is the data sources tab where you will see the data source name and next parameters tab where you enter parameters information unlike a single schedule where you run a report using static parameters I'm going to run the report pulling the parameters back from my database so for my supplier ID I'm going to click on this parameter and instead of entering a single number I'm going to use the insert menu and I'm going to bring across supplier ID and click OK. For the category ID I'm going to just run all values present at runtime and for the product ID I'm going to do the same and click next. This is the destinations tab I'm going to set up two destinations. One is going to be a disk destination and one is going to be email. The first one will do email. This is the email destination and here we have the to field and again I'm going to data drive this information from my database so I'm not going to enter in a static email instead I'm going to use the inserts menu and I'm going to pick up the email column The subject, this can be a static subject or again you can use an insert. So I will use the company name, we'll call it weekly report.
I can also customize the body of the email again using the inserts from my database. And I can change the format from text to be HTML. The format of these reports, I'm going to choose PDF. I will enable PDF options and I will put in a password and also a user password for the report. And I can enter in a watermark I can choose the font that I want to use. I can make it bold and I can change the size. I can also choose the type, whether to have an overlay or underlay. In my case, we'll do overlay. I will choose a 45 degree angle. I'll put it in the middle of the paper and OK. The naming tab, the customize file name is going to be supplier ID. I can accept that or I can remove it and choose to put in the company name and the supplier ID. And OK. And that will save the email destination. The, the next destination I'm going to do is a disk destination and I'm going to output these reports to Excel. So the first thing I need to do is click Add a Disk. And I don't actually want to select a static destination folder because I want to get that information from my database. So I'm just going to click OK here. And I'm going to bring up my folder path. And I'm going to remove it, delete and I'm going to bring in my insert and I'm actually going to drag and drop folder and the down arrow to save it. The format that I'm going to use is Excel and the worksheet name I can customize this using information from my database or I can leave it blank for sheet one for example but in my case, I'm going to drag across the company name. I can also password protect the workbook. And click OK. Next, we'll save the destinations. This moves us to exception handling. This is our exception handling tab. For more information on exception handling, please view the exception handling demo. Next, custom tasks. If you want to run any custom tasks for the reports or for the schedule, you would do that here. You can do it for each generated report or once for the entire schedule. Clicking finish will save the schedule. And I'm going to now execute this schedule so you can see the resulting output files. So right click and execute. The schedule is executed successfully, so I'll click OK and I will just navigate to the folder to show you the result. Here is my report. 
it's prompting me for the password. And here is the Excel file with our company name instead of sheet one. Now for the email, I will go and show you the email. Here is the email. I have here my formatted text and I have the PDF report. It is prompting me for a password. And here is my watermark in the middle of the report. Christian Stephen Software. Bigger data, better business.